It is now proposed that we sustain the following. Thomas S. Monson. I pledge my life, all that I may have. I will strive to the utmost of my ability to be what you would want me to be. the church everyone could relate to. When he walked with kings, with prime ministers, with presidents, it was the same way. They all felt that he was their friend. When I look at his life, it started when he was at home and he saw it from his mother. When the homeless came by and knocked on the door, his mother invited them in and he shared with us how he was impressed, how she not only fed them, but give him a message. shepherd of a remarkable kind, a consummate minister to individuals like the Savior going out to the, the poor, the sick, whoever. His journal is full of experiences of going to the rescue, full of one-on-one -on -one experiences with other people that say, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ and I am doing this because Jesus Christ went about doing good and so I will too. Yeah. 
Samoa. He loved the saints in Germany. He loved the local churches. He loved people. Wherever they were in the world, whatever religion, he was a friend, and they felt that. President Monson was assigned East Germany and countries surrounding it behind the Iron Curtain in 1968. He went time after time for 20 years. He was instrumental there. He went there at times when it was very difficult to go there. It was even risky to go there, but he was courageous. He stood on an overlook above the Elbe River and he blessed the land. He promised the people in that prayer that they would have everything that the saints all around the world had access to. Buildings and missions and temple blessings. How is that gonna happen? His openness, his honesty, his wonderful way of dealing with people regardless from where they came opened the doors. They trusted him, so the temple was built there, and it was a blessing at a time when no one would have ever thought that this would be possible. Dare to be a Mormon, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. I thank my Father in heaven for my sweet companion, Francis. I could not have asked for a more loyal, loving, and understanding companion. He was so close to his wife. She was his advisor. And it says a lot about their relationship. She was right there at his side all the time. You know, he went so often to hospitals to bless one, and it turned out to be five or six or 10. And there in the foyer, his wife was still waiting. And he said, oh, you're still here. And she said, yes, I know what you are doing. And so they went home together. He loved that. She was kind of the example for my wife. Thank you. 
things were difficult, he was just always pleasant. He would lighten almost any situation he was in that I, I, I so appreciated. Here he is recently, you know, called as the prophet, and in that priesthood session of that conference, he looks at these young men who are sitting on the front row and wiggled his ears. And they loved it. It was as if he was seeing always the happier side of things marvelous influence find joy in the journey now there is no tomorrow to remember if we don't do something today he always said Never fail to follow a prompting. Perfect for a tumultuous world. There was no tumult in him. <laughs> There's such a lesson in the way he does things because people are always the most important part of his processing, of what he's doing. He's always looking out for people. His life, I think, is a legacy of service. Wherever he was, he served. He lived what he preached. He was a man of the people and a man of God. I pledge my life, my strength, and all that I have to offer in serving him and directing the affairs of his church in accordance with his will and by his inspiration and I do so in his holy name, even the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank Thee, O God, for a prophet to guide us in these latter days. We thank Thee for sending the gospel to lighten our minds with its rays. We thank 